Numerical methods, problem 12.19, solve for the forces and reactions for the truss in figure 12.19. Determine the matrix inverse for the system. Does the vertical member force in the middle member seem reasonable and why? So to solve this problem, we must look at the figure given to us and then set up our forces for that figure. So I've done that here. We have our forces 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. All our different positions and all our different forces all set up with the angles given to us by the figure in the book. And then we use these forces on these positions to make our separate equations. So we should have six equations because we have six spots. And on each equation, we should have a x equation and a y equation. So for spot 1, we have a positive F1x, a positive F16, and a positive F12. So for F12 is on an angle of 60 degrees. So we put that over here into our equation, F1x, F16, and then F12 with a cosine of 60 because it is in the x direction, and we set it all equal to 0. And then we must find our y direction forces. So we have F1y is positive, and we have f one two positive. So we have F1y, F12 times the sine of 60 because we're going in the y direction now. And set that equal to 0. And then the same goes for the rest of the points in our figure. We take our points, find our directions of our forces, and then set up our equations. So we have six points that we have chosen. So we have six equations. Well, six sets of equations, each set with two equations, an x direction and a y direction. And down here is just all of the equations together found from the figure that we must use to make our A matrix. So to do that, we simply set up our matrix using all the variables from all the equations, so all our forces, and then we just simply go through each equation. As we have the first one, it has F1x, so we put that at the point of F1x, and we have F16, so we put a 1 at the point of F16, and then we have F12 cosine of 60, so we do 1 times the cosine of 60 at a point f of 2 in our A matrix. And so we simply go through the rest of the equations. You should have 12 rows and 12 columns in this matrix because of the amount of variables and the amount of equations we have. So we fill in our matrix with all the information from our equations with each line equal to 0 and our B matrix, except for the last one, which was our force here on point 6, which was 3,500. So we set that equal to 3,500 in the Y direction. And then we simply solve our matrix using our A backslash B equation and then display our results. We expect to have a force of 0 right here because the rest of the figure and the rest of the trusses should be taking all the force all the pressure of the 3500 force here 
and the line here or the truss here should be ignoring the force so we should have zero force here and if we run our equation what we get is our here's our A matrix that we made from all of our equations found from the figure same with the coinciding B matrix which the A matrix is set equal to then when we solve the matrices we get all our different forces and we notice that we have a zero force right where we want it to be if we count back one two three four five we go back one two three four five f of thirty six as you'll notice is the force that we expect to be zero is zero and that is the solution to this problem. It also asks for the inverse matrix. So here's the inverse matrix. You simply just do this to get the inverse matrix for this problem. And that is it for problem 12.19 in numerical methods.